Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to be speaking about uh, women and access to finance. Um, of course, technology has not changed much, uh, especially and even science uh, in relation to the human beings. At least uh, the cloning science is still a couple of centuries ago. And even if the science was close, I know the ethics are still a number of centuries away. So for me, that says that uh, all of us who are in here must be born of some woman of sorts. Um, yeah? And if you are born of a woman, I'm sure that in one sense or another, you have uh, a sister, you have uh, an aunt, you've got a friend, you've got a neighbor, you've got a colleague. Um, and all these women uh, surround us and they live with us uh, in our environment. And for me, we deserve, and the women do deserve to be celebrated. Because for one thing, that they have this whole life they bring to us, and it's this whole life we give them. So, when we have an opportunity like this to celebrate a woman, I think all of us should be able to seize that opportunity. Um, when I saw the theme, women resilience, women show, um, I got more excited because I thought that it was even more befitting for us to celebrate women. Um, resilience. And this is why, because most of the people who have lived before us for centuries, you know, we have violated women, we have discriminated women, we have abused women, but you know, they don't go away. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> they keep coming, isn't it? Yeah. And they don't give up. Yeah. So if you can imagine one of our own having downtrodden them for centuries, but they are still standing out here and they are able to speak for themselves. I think they are strong, I think they are resilient, yeah. and I think they deserve to be celebrated. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you look at the, the struggles that the women have gone through, you realize that uh, they prove that they are resilient, they prove that they can be up there, they prove that they can be on their own. And then if you look at every sphere of science, you know, medicine, of technology, arts, economics, politics, you find that there is a, a female hero in each of those areas. I think recently during the user graduation, you celebrated one of your own, uh, Mauda Chipamba. Yeah? I was very excited that she had made history, but what excited me most was actually the fact that she had overcome so much challenge that has affected the dreams of many men and women alike. And I think that is women resilience. When you look at, currently in Uganda we've got a big phrase, and I think it is in all over the international media now. We have a 16 year old girl um, who has become a global chess phenomenon. Um, and why? Because she's illiterate, she's never been to school, uh, she lived in Islam. The only opportunity she needed to become a global icon was just an opportunity to sit on the chessboard. And once she got the opportunity to sit on the chessboard, the whole world is celebrating her. And I think that is women's resilience. And I think women are proving that they have the ability to stand on their own. Now, that being said, you also realize that uh, whereas many of us have celebrated women achievement. We also have so much of our own in society. Uh, I think the previous speaker talked about the women, even themselves, trodding against the success of others. Not trying to extend a hand, or even just celebrate them for what they have achieved. And again, when I saw the show, I realized that we're talking about women's resilience. Now, resilience presupposes that there's a diversity you have to overcome, isn't it? So what we are saying, I don't know, 2,000 years after Christ, yeah, that we celebrate female resilience. Meaning that for the last 2,000 years or more, we've actually put so much adversity in the path of women for them to overcome. And here we are celebrating, yeah, you made it. I mean, 2,000 years and we are saying you made it. I think 
it speaks volumes. I think what it does, it tells us that we need a new generation, isn't it? Especially for the young ones, those in the audience who are young enough, at least younger than my generation. Yeah? We need you to start thinking. Start thinking. How do we create a generation that trusts in the abilities of women, that respects women, that does not have a second thought when it's kind, when they are talking about a man or a woman? Think about how you are going to raise that generation. Yeah? Now, if you look at um, the women, they've been pushed back, they've been cunning, and I think they've refused to accept to be second best. Now, having refused to accept to be second best, they've pushed the world to come back and realize the misdemeanors that they committed when they are very old. And what has happened is that we started giving back women some doses of freedom. Here is affirmative action. Here is a law to protect you. Here is a support organization to protect you. I mean, we have had a lot of philanthropy which has come to support women because they are too weak. And yet when you look at their resilience and what they've achieved, you realize that these women really need this. And many women have also pressured all these that have come through. Uh, but of course my talk today is not about pressuring the, those actions that have been put in place to support a woman. After all, somebody who has been disadvantaged for all these centuries, I mean, I, I wouldn't blame anyone who really put something forward to support them. What is important though is that at the center of control of women, of dominance of women, are normally those other traditional uh, factors of production. Who controls land? Who controls capital? Who controls the enterprise? Who controls labor? And if we take a look at the financing, which you take the capital component of those factors, you realize that uh, for you to grow a business, for you to be able to succeed and scale up your business, for you to be able to take advantage that the, uh, that the community or the environment in which you operate provide you, you need to raise your capital. Yeah? If you look at the slide that, 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 that is about to hit your screen, yeah, you will see that uh, in, 20, in, in 2012, um, there is a scope study that was done in Zimbabwe. And uh, that study revealed that uh, there were 2.8 million small, medium, uh, uh, media, uh, small, media, small, and micro, small, and medium enterprises. Now, that study, what it did, it asked the business people who were interviewed in those businesses, and they asked them, tell us, what is the biggest challenge in growing, in starting a business? And 53% uh, of them said, sourcing finance. Then they asked, what is the biggest challenge in operating and managing a business? Yeah? Again, 52% said, you know, sourcing finance. And then, you know, they, oh, they were put in reverse. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah? So, again, they were asking, what does it need to grow a business? Again, sourcing finance came out as the biggest factor. Now, with women, disadvantaged are not having adequate access to capital. Uh, just as most men are in our African context, it becomes very, very difficult for a woman to be able to exert herself and take the opportunities that she has. Um, but never give up on our, on our women. Um, in Zimbabwe, the statistic I gave you earlier of 2.8 million businesses, the women happen to own 53.2% of those businesses. Now, that tells you that our women are not willing to give up, is it? They are not willing to give up, and they are standing up for themselves. And wait a minute, after they realize that it's very difficult to access capital, because they are more disadvantaged, whereas the men in Africa are as disadvantaged when it comes to accessing capital, I mean, all of us are financially literate, at least the majority of us. Most of us find the cost of borrowing quite exorbitant. Most of us don't have enough institutions to serve us. Those factors that affect men also affect women. But when it comes to women, again, the men control the security to access a loan. 
when you look at our current regime of getting the loan, I mean, a man must con consent to a spouse to get a loan. Yeah? And that means that if you are married, you cannot access a loan unless your husband says you can access one. Uh -huh. Yeah? Now, when it comes to us women borrowing, especially those that are married, then the husband is borrowing from us. And of course, he doesn't pay back. When it comes to us women now finding our things, doing our business, and getting our businesses going, then the man gets afraid of us. Now they start fearing us. Yeah? And now you have people either separating, or if you're not yet married, you have people scattering around you. Yeah? Now, those are the challenges that our women are facing. But the women have not given up. What have they done? When you look at Zimbabwe and our case in Uganda, you see that what women have done, they decided to say, we can set aside the money, we can save. If you look at our next slide here, you'll be amazed. We say that 53%, at least about 53% of women are owning businesses. Yeah? And when, we, when they were asked, what is the main source of money to start a business? Yeah? Guess what? Yeah? 59% said what? Own savings. What does that tell you? You 53% of women are owning businesses and they're saying that 59% of them saved in order to start a business. Isn't that ability? Isn't that capacity? Isn't that resilience? Do we really need to sit around and whine about these women? Do we? Do we? So our women are out there fighting their battles. Our women are not giving up on all that has been put before them. Yeah? They are not giving up. Now, when it came to mobilizing funds, they decided that if the form of financial systems have excluded us, let's go to our Chimbazo, isn't it? <laughs> I've, not, I've not had an opportunity to deeply study the Chimbazo here, yeah? But in Uganda, the Chimbazo has become so poor that the women have had to change both government policy and the products in the banking system. Why? Because they put so much money in the chimbazos that the banks cannot live without that money. So what have the banks done? They've had to start wheeling clubs, they've had to buy these trucks that, you know, armored vehicles that go all over the villages looking for the chimbazos. Yeah? So the woman who was unattractive, who was unbankable, yeah, now, you know, she's a darling, isn't it? <laughs> she is. And, and she's walked her own path. Nobody put her there, isn't it? Now, when it comes to government, in, in, in Uganda, because of, of the ability of the women who have dominated our chambers there, government has had to put up a whole program to support the development of the Chimbazos to facilitate the linkage banking to ensure that, you know, those funds remain safe. The women have not given up on that. Some women have registered their businesses in order to formally access finance in the banks. Some women have gone a step further. I mean, when you look at the acquisition of property of assets, it's been a taboo in many respects. But some of our women have acquired assets. And they're now able to walk in the doors of these form of financial institutions. But what is very intriguing and very exciting about the woman is that we know the statistics I've seen across Africa where you've been in the financial sector. There is no single statistic where a man has a better credit history than a woman. Yeah? Which means that when a woman takes her loan, the woman owns her obligation. The woman does what? Owns her obligation. Now, because the women have owned their obligations, because they've started viable businesses, again, now the former financial institutions are trying to grow their business by looking out for these women. Again, the women have charted their own course. The women have charted their own course. Now, that notwithstanding, of course, you realize that a lot still remains uh, in the hand of of these women, 
the journey is still very long. And why? It is because our society has socialized us, has convinced us that a woman does not have the same ability as a man. If she must do the same thing, maybe she needs to be supported. Now, and that's where the challenge of our young ones now, or the young generation, comes in. How are you going to change the mindset of the ones who are not born? To believe that a young boy and a young girl can grow up respecting each other, trusting in each other's abilities, without question, without having a second thought. How are you going to achieve that? Now, when you look at our young ones, especially the females, our prioritization has significantly changed. We are no longer asking ourselves the serious questions. Yeah? I mean, when you look at the consumerism that has consumed us, we are no longer thinking of getting out of school and getting an income. We are no longer thinking of saving. We are no longer thinking of how do I invest. Yeah? We are thinking of the, the night out, yeah? of the other guy, of the rich boyfriend, the rich husband. And, and that is not adding to the resilience that the rest of the women have shown us. And so, as I wind up, I'm going to ask the young women and the young men in this audience. I, I hope you can answer my questions. Yeah. So if you are a young man growing up now, as you are, you're about to finish university, you're going to go out into the wider world. What is going through your mind as you plan to go out in life, meet people, and raise a family? For the young lady who is about to get out of this university, what are your next steps? as you go out in the world. I challenge you to think of creating a new generation of, of people who believe in equality. But let's take a simple test on ourselves. Do we ourselves believe in equality of men and women? Do we believe in equal opportunity? I mean, just a simple question. For that discussion group you have, um, think about it. Who is the coordinator of that group? What gender is that person? How about the secretary of that group? What gender? So, are, are, are you the person who's going to create the new generation? Or you need saving yourself? Yeah? So, and for the young lady now, are you thinking investment? Are you thinking income? Are you thinking saving? Or you are you thinking of, you know, <laughs> I guess somebody gave me an answer. <laughs> and for the young man, are you going to teach your son not to beat up a girl because she's weak? Or are you going to teach your son to respect a girl because they are the same and have the same abilities? Now, lastly, I came with my wife actually, she was visiting me. She, she, she's a very pretty lady and my, the love of my life. <laughs> so, so when, when I finished school, when I finished school, I first took out my, my loan when I was still a young man and I bought a piece of land. Then you call it a stand, yeah? So that stand represented a very dream in my life, isn't it? It represented everything and I could see the, the, the yard, the entrance, the design of the house. And, 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 and then, of course, we, we get married. And uh, my wife had a stint with an export business in a company. After a year, the company wound up, and then she, she said, I'm not going to go back to work, I'm going to start a business. So she has, um, she has a small uh, export, agro-export business, which, of which she, and she owns 100% shares. Yeah. <laughs> now, with 100% shares in her business, she, one day she walks to me and says, Darling, I want to acquire a property. I said, okay, it's fine, you can go and acquire a property. I said, no, I need to mortgage your stand. 
Yeah? <laughs> I need to mortgage your study in order to get my property. And then it was like, oh, you want to get mortgage my property? Um, okay. Uh, I said, okay, when are you? Uh, do you have the papers or anything? <laughs> She said, she said, no, I don't have the papers, but they said they need an original certificate of date, so you give it to me, and then you come to the bank and sign some papers. I said, okay, fine, they come to the bank and sign the papers. And they did, they went to the bank, I signed the papers. But today, I have my title still back in my locker, isn't it? And for the young people who are here, why do you think I signed away my title? Do you think, because she's so pretty and, <laughs> and I, I love her so much that they would give away my possession to somebody they didn't believe had the ability to return my property. I think it is high time that we trust in the abilities of women. Thank you so much.